now we will see next concept that is relaxation time relaxation time point number first we know that that is inside conductor inside conductor e bar will be equals to zero electric field intensity inside the conductor is zero now next point now it is being very interesting to know that inside a conductor suppose this is a conductor it consists of many molecules this molecule is represented by this circle and inside this circle this dot represents the atom so it is interesting to know that how the charge inside the conductor how the charge inside the conductor will arrive at the surface will arrive at the surface is as a surface charge so this is known as your valence electron so this valence electron will appears on the surface as a surface charge so the amount of the time the taken by the charge to appear it on the surface as a surface charge is known as what your relaxation time i am repeating over here the valence electron present in the outermost shell of the molecule the time taken by that valence electron to appear on the surface as a surface charge that time is known as your relaxation time that time is known as your relaxation time so to derive an expression of the relaxation time point number first we have with us ohms law applied to the field theory is given by j bar equals to sigma into e bar point number next as per current continuity equation we have with us del bar dot j bar equals to minus del by del t into rho v now substituting the ohms law equation in current continuity equation that is this equation number 1 this equation number 2 so we can say that put equation 2 in sorry so put equation 1 in equation 2 we have with us del bar dot sigma into e bar equal to minus del by del t into rho v now we know that electric flux density d bar equals to epsilon into e bar this epsilon equals to epsilon 0 into epsilon r so d bar electric flux density equals to epsilon into e bar so therefore e bar equals to d bar divided by epsilon and therefore we can say that current continuity equation that is del bar dot sigma into d bar divided by epsilon equals to minus del by del t into rho v now this sigma and epsilon are the constant so we can take it out from that bracket is given by sigma into epsilon equation will be del bar dot d bar equals to minus del by del t into rho v now as per the gauss law in point form we know that del bar dot d bar equals to rho v and therefore we can say that sigma upon epsilon into rho v equals to minus del by del t into rho v 
I am rewriting this equation as del by del t into rho v equals to minus sigma upon epsilon into rho v. Now del of rho v divided by rho v equals to minus sigma into epsilon into del of t. Now integrating both side, integrating both side we have with us integral of del rho by rho it is equals to log of rho v equals to minus sigma e will be out of the integral sign integral of del of t will be equals to t plus c please note down here we are not using any limits we are using indefinite integrals and therefore answer of the indefinite integrals is equals to some constant present in the final answer so therefore final answer consists of log of rho v equals to minus sigma upon epsilon into t plus c next step we have to find out the value of this c to find out the value of the c we are substituting t equals to 0 in above equation and therefore we have with us if t equals to 0 rho v will change to rho v0 so therefore we have with us log of rho v0 equal to 0 plus c and therefore c equals to log of rho v0 so we get the value of that constant which is given by log of rho v0 now substituting this value in this main equation we have with us log of rho v equal to minus sigma upon epsilon plus log of rho v0 so log of rho v minus log of rho v0 equal to minus sigma upon epsilon into t so log of rho v by rho v0 equals to minus sigma upon epsilon into t taking anti log on the both side we have with us rho v divided by rho v0 equals to e raised to power of minus sigma upon epsilon into t now let sigma upon epsilon equals to 1 upon t so therefore we have with us rho v equals to rho v0 to e raised to power of minus t by capital T so this is the final equation for the relaxation time therefore we can say that t equals to epsilon by sigma is known as your relaxation time constant is known as your relaxation time constant so the value of this relaxation time is low for good conductors for good conductors the relaxation time value will be very large for the insulators for the insulators like quartz so therefore we can define the relaxation time we can define the relaxation time as time it takes time it takes time it takes a charge takes a charge placed in the interior of a material to drop to 1 upon e percentage of initial value so this is known as your relaxation time so time taken by a charge place in the interior of the material to drop to 1 by e percentage of the initial value is known as the relaxation time 
of the material so its value is low for the good conductors value is large for the insulators or poor conducting materials for example quartz and the value of the relaxation time is given by t equals to sigma divided by epsilon so that's the for the relaxation time thank you